Or you could think of it this way. I had a wonderful father. I loved him and he, he loved me. Never, never, never had anything but love for me. But I held a healthy fear of him too. You know, because I knew where the line was with him. If I went over the line, there would be consequences, right? There would be punishment, right? I knew what the rules were, and if I broke them, there would be consequences. Scripture, God's Word, God's truth are rules. They are showing us where the lines are. And because they, there are consequences, if we break them or we go over the line, we should possess a twinge of fear of them. Knowing where the lines are, a little bit of fear of God's truth is wisdom. It's just being smart. You know, God's lines, too, are unmovable. We just don't disregard them because we don't like them. Second Peter verse one, or chapter one, verse 20. This is Peter writing this. Right before this verse, Peter's talking about, I saw Jesus transfigured. I saw what he was on that mountain transfigured before me. I heard the word of God come down. You would do good if you listened to this. And then he says this, first of all, what you must understand is this, is that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation, meaning no piece of Scripture is a matter of one's own opinion. It's not subjective. It's an objective truth coming from beyond us. And then he continues, because no prophecy ever came from human will. But men and women moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God, meaning none of this, any of this, of any of it, came from us. It all came from God to us. And now, when I read that, I begin to get really scared. Some fear comes to me. Because it doesn't take me long to start thinking about how Maybe we as churches and leaders from time to time have been moving the lines a bit. Maybe making up the rules. Or as another real scary scripture from Jude, Jesus' half-brother would say, perverting the grace of God and turning it into licentiousness. Taking God's grace towards us and using it as a free pass to do anything or affirm any behavior. Hey, we're saved. God forgives us. Let's do whatever we want. Actually, if it is what I want and God made me that way, maybe it isn't even a sin at all. Plus, it's mean to speak a lot of God's truth to people. And it also can scare you from time to time. It's fear. Jesus did say millstone, right? Just want to make sure. When my wife and I were on vacation, we drove by a, a church in Maryland that was draped in a huge rainbow colored flag for the LGBTQIA community. And under one of the flags was the sign that says, we are a welcoming congregation. Like LGBTQ people, you are welcome here, right? And I said to my wife, you know, that kind of offends me in some way because do I have to drape the church in one of these flags to be welcoming? No, because we've always been welcoming to everyone in the church. And every one of the churches that I've ever served, including New Brighton, has been welcoming. We are all created in the image of God and we're all welcome here and we bring all of our baggage and our sin and anything else with it and we lay it at the feet of Jesus. We are welcome and we accept all. But no, what they're saying with that is not that they are welcoming and accepting, but they are affirming too. Affirming of anything that you want to do. And there's the problem. That's what I'm talking about with maybe we're moving the line a bit. I can be welcoming, I can be accepting, but I cannot be affirming of everything. 
including sin in my, my own life that I need to work on. I can't affirm everything is not sin just so that I feel welcome or accepted. For example, can a man have a baby? We all know that biologically a man cannot have a baby. We cannot affirm the lie of a man having a baby. If we affirm that in the churches, we allow a great deceiver into the church, a liar. And who is the great deceiver? We as churches need to reach for a greater ideal that says the great deceiver, the devil, is not allowed. Because that line is immovable. The rule is set. And it's not my rule open to my interpretation, as Peter says. But it is a loving rule because it protects us from the consequences. You love your child enough to smack their hand away from a hot stove. You know why? Because you don't want to see them burn. You love them too much. 